a major overlooked factor that you're going to be able to up level in your own life, in your own body, is the overlooked science and understanding of our brown adipose tissue. <laughs> On this episode, we're going to be talking about up-leveling a hidden dimension of your metabolism. When we're looking at the field of metabolism, the field of obesity and treatments for obesity, insulin resistance, and things of the like, we tend to have tunnel vision in our modern way of viewing these things. We often look at what are we doing proactively. For example, we tend to think that we're burning a lot of fat when we're getting out there and exercising our tushies off. All right, shout out to Tushies. That's something my grandma used to say. But we're just out there getting after it, breaking a sweat, going hard. And we think that we're burning a lot of fat then. And of course, we do know that there's a metabolic uptick that takes place post-exercise. But still, what's going down for us psychologically is when we're hitting the exercise really hard. Or even when we're modulating and constantly managing our diet. But cumulatively, even for folks that are doing this stuff at a consistently high level, you combine your exercise time and the time that you're eating, for example, together, that's just a couple hours of the day tops for most folks. That leaves another 22 hours that you're not tinkering around with those things. And what healthy metabolism, healthy metabolic function is all about is what's happening in those other 22, all right? It's not just about the two, which of course, we know that exercise and we know that having optimal nutrition is going to be a major player in our overall metabolic function, in our health, our body fat ratio, and the like. But it's really about what's happening all the time when you're not proactively doing those things. So we're talking about having an optimal metabolic rate. All right, This is the rate at which your body is expending energy, whether you're doing activity or whether you're at rest. And that's the key. It's what your metabolism is doing when you're not doing, quote, doing anything. And a major overlooked factor that you're going to be able to up level in your own life, in your own body, is the overlooked science and understanding of our brown adipose tissue. Brown adipose tissue, or BAT for short. All right, brown adipose tissue. Now, what is this? Miraculous, seemingly miraculous brown adipose tissue. What is it actually? Well, brown fat cells are a type of adipocyte. All right. Most folks think about adipocytes in terms of our white adipose tissue, our energy storing cells that we have. Right. So our white fat can turn up as our subcutaneous fat that's located just beneath our skin. You know, this is what we largely see on thighs, butt, back of the arms. And also you can have some on your belly as well, but it's the kind that you can kind of get a grip on. Then we have the visceral storage fats or visceral white adipose tissue, which is more that deep abdominal type fat. And we also have intramuscular storage fats or white adipose tissue that really function as on-site resources for our muscle to function, all right? But they still have this kind of dichotomous action of one being fat and one being muscle and muscle doing the thing of movement, burning energy, and the fat providing that energy. Now, brown fat cells are, again, adipocytes whose metabolic machinery is geared towards burning fat instead of storing it. So it's a type of fat cell that is geared towards, again, it's metabolic machinery, which you're gonna learn about today, is geared towards burning energy rather than storing it. The main function of brown fat is to generate heat, All right? That's what it's there for. And actually, this is why babies, All right, this is why infants have a significantly high level of brown adipose tissue. And also, a little fun fact, hibernating animals, all right, or animals, all right? So that's how I used to say animals when I was a, a shorty. So hibernating animals so when a bear is going to get in his snuggle on you know up in his bear cave he has a lot of brown adipose tissue all right we'll just call him smoky all right we'll just call him smoky the bear he has a lot of brown adipose tissue so he's able to sustain that 
optimal thermic regulation or that thermic level so that it doesn't die, right? So it's keeping the, the body heat at the right temperature to sustain life. And so for human babies, as infants, we have a much more substantial ratio of brown adipose tissue to protect us from hypothermia. Yet as we grow older, that ratio tends to diminish quite a bit. And another little fun fact is that babies, a big reason that babies also have a higher ratio of brown adipose tissue is they can't shiver to generate heat. All right, that's right. Many times people don't think about stuff like this, but babies can't shiver as far as shivering to warm themselves up or to indicate that they're cold, okay? Whereas for us, we get these muscle contractions, these on and off contractions taking place to kind of spark and generate heat when we are shivering, all right? But babies are yet to lay down the muscle necessary to trigger this reaction. So we've evolved to have a higher ratio of brown adipose tissue to keep us at that right temperature when we're little babies, little babies. According to a collaborative study conducted by researchers in Australia and China, brown adipose tissue is a major thermogenic site in humans and other mammals. And it's estimated that the heat produced by brown adipose tissue is up to 300 times higher than what's produced by most other tissues of the same weight. That is nuts. All right, again, when I'm saying that brown adipose tissue has this role, this thermogenic role in regulating temperature and expending energy, creating heat, I'm not exaggerating in the slightest. Now, here's another big insight for today that we're gonna be talking about. Adults with higher levels of brown fat tend to be slimmer, having a lower ratio of white adipose tissue than those adults who have low levels of brown fat. And the great news leading into our topic today is that our ratio of brown fat that we carry is changeable. This is something that we can have an influence on. Now let's talk about why brown fat is brown. Brown fat achieves its distinguishing brown color thanks to its extremely high concentration of mitochondria. Mitochondria are really regarded as these metabolic power plants within our cells that are there creating energy for all of our cellular functions. And brown fat is just teeming with mitochondria. Now let's actually compare the composition of a brown fat cell to the composition of a white fat cell, or again, a brown fat adipocyte or a white fat adipocyte. Within a white fat cell, there is a single large lipid droplet. All right, this lipid droplet is essentially a reservoir for storing energy. And in a white fat cell, there's one big old lipid droplet. And in fact, this lipid droplet is so big within a white fat cell that it essentially doesn't leave room for much of anything else. And it even crowds the nucleus of the cell to the edge of the cell. And the nucleus is actually flattened in a white fat cell. Now, also, there's relatively few mitochondria present, all right? Very, very few. Now, instead of having one large lipid droplet, a brown fat cell has several tiny lipid droplets that can hold energy. It also has more of a normal shaped nucleus because it's not getting smushed by an extra thick lipid droplet. But unlike a white fat cell, a much larger portion of a brown fat cell is made up of heat generating mitochondria. It actually expends a tremendous amount of energy, a tremendous amount of energy compared to a white fat cell. Because of its ability to expend energy, to expend caloric energy, to burn energy for fuel, burn fat for fuel, brown fat is being studied like crazy right now for its metabolic effects. Maintaining a healthy amount of brown fat can be a key ingredient in a robust metabolism. 
Research published by the Garin Institute of Medical Research found that once activated, just 50 grams of brown fat on your body could burn an additional 300 calories of energy in a day. That's without you doing anything different. Again, just 50 grams of brown fat on your frame can burn an additional 300 calories a day. 50 grams is right in the ballpark of about one-tenth of a pound of brown fat, and you could be burning an additional 300 calories a day on automatic. Now, what if it was two-tenths more or three-tenths more? That's where we see this difference that we can recognize experientially where somebody appears to have a, quote, fast metabolism, right? We might have a friend or a family member that has a fast metabolism. It seems like they can eat what other people can't eat. They could exercise less, whatever the case might be. And they seem to have a different metabolic blueprint, a different outpicturing of their body. Why is that? And also, we might have noticed this phenomenon in our own lives. As we get older, it becomes increasingly more challenging to do the things that we once did as far as eating certain things or get, quote, getting away with getting less sleep and all kinds of things that tend to happen as people age. Like, for example, somebody might feel like, you know, when I was 16, I could eat whatever I want. I barely exercise and I had this figure that I wanted. And now if I even look at my DoorDash app, I start feeling my butt get bigger. All right. So there's some kind of change that happens overall with our endocrine system, of course, because our hormones are controlling much of this. But another one of those things that, again, is creating the metabolic fingerprint that we all have and how much energy we're expending just on automatic has to do with our brown fat ratio. Also, just a little shout out. We're going to talk much more about this in upcoming shows, but the relationship of our muscle in this equation as well and having more of a muscle centric approach to our lifestyle versus trying to constantly battle fat. We need to focus more on adding muscle and adding brown adipose tissue. There are several factors that influence how much brown fat we actually have and how well it does its job. And what you eat and other lifestyle factors definitely play a part in this, which we'll get to soon. But first, there's another interesting thing that you need to know about brown fat cells. You can actually induce the creation of brown fat cells from other fat cells. There are actually precursors of brown fat cells inside of other fat cells, and you can induce them into becoming brown fat cells. Now, that's one aspect. Additionally, we have the more recently discovered beige fat cells. All right, so we've got the white fat cells, we've got the beige in the middle here, and then we've got the brown fat cells, all right? There's diversity. Beige fat is fascinating in that it appears to have the flexibility to act like either white fat or brown fat, depending upon environmental inputs. According to scientists at Georgia State University, beige fat has potent potential to fight obesity in much the same way as brown fat by burning fuel rather than storing it. But beige fat, this is important, it's actually genetically distinct from brown fat cells. Brown fat cells are born from stem cell precursors that also produce muscle cells. Again, there's that connection there. While beige fat, on the other hand, forms within deposits of white fat cells from beige cell precursors. All right, so it's distinct. And again, it appears that certain lifestyle factors can influence the, quote, browning of our cells within our fat cell community. Right. So essentially, we can help ourselves to get a tan, but this is getting away from the cookie cutter understanding of metabolism where we're trying to, quote, burn fat and build muscle. There's so much more to this picture than this dichotomous thinking. Right. Fat's the enemy and we need to just get rid of it and we need to build as much muscle as possible. We have all of these things for a purpose. We evolved to have healthy ratios of a variety of different 
types of fat cell and a variety of different types of muscle as well. And so the closer that we can engage our bodies and our environment to get in alignment with this template of the human design, and this is going to do nothing but move us forward, not just with our body composition, but also our health overall. Now, another question might come up, where the hell is brown fat located? Like, where is this brown fat? Well, brown fat on an adult human being is primarily found around the neck, around your clavicles, AKA your collarbones, around your upper back region and along your spine. Now that's where it is primarily going to be located. Now let's talk a little bit about how does it actually work? Brown fat's ability to burn energy for heat is partly accomplished through a special protein called thermogenin. All right, there's a special protein that's pretty unique here that is credited with some of its ability to do the magic that it's doing. All right, so again, this being a special protein, when you hear the word protein, hopefully it's conjuring up the understanding of how important our diet is because these things are literally built from the amino acids that we provide our system. All right, so just put that in your back pocket. Now, in addition to the role of thermogenin, the major role player, again, is that brown fat contains a large number of mitochondria, which, and this is important, these mitochondria are enriched in uncoupling protein one. Uncoupling protein one or UCP1 is a transmembrane protein in the mitochondrial inner membrane and is exclusively expressed in brown adipocytes. This is a magic that only brown cells, that brown adipocytes, brown fat cells have. Now, what does this mean, this uncoupling? All right, are we talking about breaking up? Kinda. The interesting thing about uncoupling protein one is that it can actually uncouple ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. This is the energy currency of the human body produced by the mitochondria. UCP1 can uncouple ATP production from lipid and carbohydrate catabolic pathways. So both of the pathways that our cells are able to extract from our bodies and make energy. UCP1 can jump in here and uncouple from both of these processes. And again, this is largely happening in our brown fat tissue, all right? Because UCP1 is uniquely expressed here. And this leads to the conversion of chemical energy into heat, all right? So it's a little bit complex, these steps involved in this process, but just understand that uncoupling protein one is able to uncouple ATP in both processes, the process involved in glucose metabolism and fat metabolism. So it's pretty cool. Now let's move into what all of this actually does for us. All right. We know that brown adipose tissue has this unique impact on our metabolism and can uplevel our metabolic rate. But what does that mean for us? Superficially, we've already talked about the overarching benefits that brown fat can have on our metabolism and fat loss, but the benefits actually go much, much farther than that. The largest study of the effects of brown fat ever conducted was just published this year. The study, published in the journal Nature Medicine, examined 52,000 participants and found that those who had a detectable amount of brown fat were significantly less likely than their peers to suffer cardiac and metabolic conditions ranging from type 2 diabetes to coronary artery disease, both of which are leading causes of death in the United States. They found that brown fat has this protective effect against some of our leading killers. All right, now to extract a study like this, the researchers wanted to be able to get a large data set, but they know that the average physician is not doing scans to try to analyze people's brown fat levels. So the researchers found a center that was doing scans for cancers. 
and we're just like, hey, we know that you guys can also see brown fat ratios because they actually have to try to make sure that they are able to distinguish between the two with brown fat having a certain appearance and cancer having a certain appearance. And so while they were doing that, they were just like, hey, while you guys are doing that, can we just get some data on the brown fat while you're at it? And so they were able to put together this big data set and we can extract the value from it. The study also noted something else really surprising, which was that brown fat may actually mitigate the negative health effects of obesity. In general, obese individuals have an increased risk of heart and metabolic conditions, but the researchers found that among obese people in their study who actually have notable amounts of brown fat, the prevalence of these conditions, heart disease, metabolic conditions, the prevalence of these conditions was similar to that of people who were not obese. Dr. Paul Cohen, one of the authors of the study stated, quote, it almost seems like they are protected from the harmful effects of white fat, unquote. They found that this brown fat, folks, even folks who are in a state of obesity, who have a notable amount of brown fat are essentially being protected from the negative effects of carrying excessive white fat. It's pretty interesting. Another mechanism that they noted in this study was that brown fat cells consumed glucose in order to burn calories. Again, that's that glycolytic, that's that carbohydrate metabolic process pathway. And it's possible that this automatically helps to regulate blood glucose levels. So they're trying to find this tie-in, like is brown fat one of the ways that we're able to modulate and manage blood sugar levels better? That's what the data is indicating. Another hypothesis that was being explored here in this data is that brown fat participates in hormone signaling to other organs, which could be optimizing system-wide metabolic performance, which leads to another analysis that was published by researchers at the University of Michigan. The paper titled, The Brown Fat Secretome metabolic functions beyond thermogenesis analyzes the now established wide range of positive impacts brown fat has both locally and systemically in the body they detailed the influence brown fat has on the endocrine system overall on the cardiovascular system and its protective effects there and even the immune system it's really remarkable all the different areas that having a healthy ratio of brown fat can have an impact on. And so looking at this again, this secretome is what brown fat is secreting. It's what it's releasing and shooting out everywhere all over the body. And again, this is one of the most overlooked aspects of metabolism today is not just targeting fat and trying to do away with white adipose tissue, but what are the underlying mechanisms that actually help to support and regulate our metabolism overall to have a healthy metabolic rate at rest and during activity and also the practical functionality of brown adipose tissue being able to, to keep us insulated and to keep us warm and to be able to adapt to our conditions. That's what it's about at the end of the day. And what have we devolved from? being able to adapt to our conditions, right? Humans today, we're all about our creature comforts, right? We're hiding out from change. We're hiding out from environmental influences. Even when we are eating healthy, we tend to eat the same stuff over and over again, you know? And so that diversity when it comes to nutrition, the diversity in temperature exposures, all the things we naturally would have had, we don't have no more. All right, so these are things that we evolved to evoke. You know, our genes really expect us to activate this brown adipose tissue and also through movement, through activity, as we're going to talk about. And I want to share one other little fun fact with you, because when we think about the normal modality of, quote, burning fat, it's a process because it's sort of like in my college accounting class, there's this, this, this acronym 
life o fifo last in first out first in first out as far as inventory i have no idea why i was taking this class by the way but when it comes to our metabolism it largely functions as lifo right last in first out so the thing that is readily available when you eat a meal is that food your body hasn't done all the work to try to convert that into human tissue and so it's broken down it can be used right there so it's the last thing in versus the stuff that's already stored in your body stored in your liver glycogen stored in your muscle all right stored in your fat cells so last in first out what you bring in is going to get used first so if you're exercising to lose weight to burn fat you got to burn through the food that you ate that was most recent you got to get through that then you got to deplete the liver glycogen you got to deplete the muscle glycogen and then you get to fat all right now there are some forms of exercise that can kind of bypass and get to stored fat faster which is generally low impact low intensity cardiovascular exercise like walking for example is a good way to access like your body can actually access that because it's not needed for something that's very glycolytic and intense so just a little fun fact there but here's what's also important in this context because brown adipose tissue can immediately start to burn white fat it doesn't have to go through the process of trying to deplete everything else it just burns fat this is another primary advantage and why this masterclass on this subject is so important all right so this can get right to that stored fat that stored energy that a lot of folks are trying to get rid of today because here in the united states i've cited this many times we've got upwards it's getting close to 250 million of our citizens are overweight or obese and nobody signed up for us to be in this position it's just the way that things have devolved and being more empowered and learning about things like this like activating our brown adipose tissue and just improving our metabolic makeup our metabolic machinery overall is a huge path to future success now let's dive into some clinically proven ways to improve the production and activity of your brown adipose tissue here we go a study cited in the new england journal of medicine found that brown fat activity was activated in 96% of test subjects during cold exposure versus when they were in thermoneutral conditions, right? Thermoneutral being that quote room temperature, what we always want the conditions at, just them being exposed to cold, 96% of test subjects had their brown fat active. They got switched on. This is one of the primary things that folks know about today. And one of the major benefits of cold exposure is improving the activity and production of our brown adipose tissue. So there are many ways to engage with this phenomenon. And we're going to go through a series of them. One of them is the El Natural cold plunge. You know, finding a cold place and getting in that water. All right. So this is something that pe people would do historically. You know, and a lot of folks like they're they're taking trips to go to the different places, maybe, you know, like Finland, for example, and to embark on a is a lot of cultures is a part of tradition. It's a part of celebration to go and take that cold dipper. All right. So cold plunge. And so, for example, if you got a swimming pool and, you know, maybe you got a little in ground or, you know, the above ground, whatever it is, and it's a little bit colder during, you know, certain parts of the year. When you might have a heater to heat it up, don't, you know, just let that bad boy stay cold and use that for your, your cold plunge, your cold dipper, replicating what would happen in the environment. And also you can do a contrast where you're doing the cold and then going maybe right to a sauna or going right to a hot tub for some added benefits there. There's also in the data some significant benefits seen with contrast of cold and hot, but cold plunge, number one, number two, ice bath. All right. So you can get all kinds of contraptions to take an ice bath. It's another way to engage with this. Very, very popular now. There's even a show called Cold as Balls with Kevin Hart on YouTube. All right, so Kevin Hart. Shout out to Kevin Hart, Cold as Balls. He does an interview with people in the ice bath. All right, he came out, I think, a couple of years ago, but he's just trucking along. I don't know if he's still doing those shows, but they're very entertaining to say the least. 
And another way to engage with this is something that we talked about with neuroscientist Dr. Andrew Huberman and the work that he's doing at his lab at Stanford University in simply utilizing a cold shower. That can help to engage and activate this brown adipose tissue as well. In addition, there are whole body cryo chambers, right? So the WBCs, all right, out there where people can, you know, you get into this contraption, you know, it might be like literally a, they put you into a, a box and close a door and you're like in the freezer or there's somewhere it's just basically from the neck down and they're dousing you with nitrogen, all right? So it's colder than freezing water. All right, then, you know, ice water, but it's not as visceral. It doesn't feel the same. It is definitely extremely cold and it's for a, a shorter duration as well, generally, and that, that you'll be able to handle this. And so you can extract some benefit there as well. There are several studies for everything that I've cited. We have multiple peer review studies citing the benefit of all these things, including there was a study that was titled salivary steroid hormone response to whole body cryotherapy in elite rugby players. 25 professional rugby players underwent a seven day cryotherapy protocol consisting of two daily sessions. Saliva samples were taken each morning and evening. Here's what they found. Cortisol levels reduced after the two whole body cryo sessions just after the first day. And after 14 consecutive days of the whole body cryo sessions, cortisol, of course, was noted to decrease, but also testosterone increased, as well as the testosterone to cortisol ratio. All right, that's pretty remarkable. The study stated, quote, we found that whole body cryotherapy acutely affects the salivary steroid hormone profile. And the results are evident already after only one twice daily session. Most significantly, after one week of consecutive twice daily whole body cryo sessions, all the hormones were modified that they were tracking. So they were also tracking DHEA, estradiol, and other things. And they went on to say, this is the first experimental report that links changes in the hormonal asset to whole body cryotherapy, unquote. Again, remarkable. And I love that people are asking these questions. Scientists are asking these questions and actually let's do some trials and figure out what it do. Now, long-term mild cold exposure, rather than just the intense cold plunge, cryotherapy, you know, whole body cryotherapy box or with water, long-term mild cold exposure can stimulate brown fat growth and activity in humans as well. Simply just being in a cooler room throughout the day. Research published at the joint meeting of the International Society of Endocrinology and the Endocrine Society in Chicago detailed this experiment. The scientists explored the impact of controlled temperature acclimatization on brown adipose tissue and energy balance by following five men between the ages of 19 and 23 over a four month period. So they're following them long term over a four month period. The volunteers engaged in their usual daytime activities, but slept in a private room in which the air temperature varied monthly from 66 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 19 degrees Celsius, and 81 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 27 degrees Celsius. Personal temperature detectors monitored each volunteer's exposed temperature continuously over the entire four months. At the end of each month, the researchers measured the men's brown adipose tissue and energy metabolism and found that mild cold, so when the temperature was down closer to that 66 degree Fahrenheit level, increased the men's brown fat amount and activity while mild warmth so when it was up around 80 degrees, actually suppressed it. So just being in a colder room over that period, even just sleeping in a cooler room, can increase your production and activity of your brown adipose tissue. Pretty freaking remarkable. 
All right, so cold exposure, that's number one, looking at what can we actually do to proactively increase our body's ratio and activity of this remarkable brown adipose tissue. Next up, we're going to look at how our nutrition impacts our brown adipose tissue. And this should be just a logical jump because what we're eating literally is what's making our brown adipocytes. It's what's making our tissues, right? It's literally made from the foods that we eat. And of course, the engagement with other cells is going to be heavily influenced by what we're making those cells out of, what's flowing through our digestive system, flowing through our veins. A fascinating study looking at the connection, but by the way, I want to preface this by saying there's already been many notable aspects looking at coffee's benefit on human metabolism. But this study was published in Scientific Reports, and the scientists discovered that coffee may be able to influence the activity of our brown adipose tissue. Now, what they were detailing is, again, this potentiality of, quote, browning of our other fat cells. And drinking coffee appears to actually nudge other fat cells into the fat burning brown fat side of things. And if you just, for me, as soon as I read the study, I was just thinking about how brown coffee, you understand? Like just that connection there, if we're looking at like the doctrine of signatures, the sign of nature, and maybe it's indicating what it might be affecting in the body, right? This, this brown liquid substance that was, that's like one of the, of course, uh, most consumed beverages in the world. And, but also when we're talking about coffee, we're not talking about the Frappet Mappa Slappuccino or whatever is coming from that, you know, with all the sugar and all that crazy stuff. We're not talking about that. We're just talking about coffee. All right. That's what we're talking about here. Now, again, in addition to that, drinking coffee appears to nudge other fat cells into that brown fat cell category. Drinking coffee was also found through thermal imaging. It was found to actually light up brown fat dominant locations on the body. All right, so they used thermal imaging, had folks drink coffee, and they could see brown fat lights up. Pretty remarkable. Pretty remarkable. Now, again, the quality. And you're going to find out exactly why. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to just tell you right now. Part of having a healthy ratio of brown adipose tissue is avoiding things that suppress our brown adipose tissue. One of those being pesticides. This was published in the peer-reviewed prestigious journal, Nature. And it found that the pesticide chlorpyrifos promotes obesity by inhibiting diet-induced thermogenesis in our brown adipose tissue. Not good. I'm sick of it with the pesticides. How many bad things can they do? We got all this data, mountains of peer-reviewed evidence on these insane chemicals that are designed to kill stuff. Now we found that it disrupts our metabolism through suppressing our brown adipose tissue. All right, so even with your coffee, where are you getting your coffee from? All right, are you getting a piping hot cup of that, that Joe along with some steam to perfection chlorpyrifos? That's not good. All right, it's taking the medicine with the poison. All right, we got to upgrade things here. Number one. Number two, we can upgrade our coffee by having it infused with other things that have benefits to our metabolism, like cordyceps medicinal mushroom, like lion's mane medicinal mushroom. The University of Malaya found that lion's mane is actually able to stimulate neurogenesis, the creation of new brain cells. It's just remarkable. And you can have that together with an organic coffee. But the key here is, of course, as you know, if you've listened to the Model Health Show for any time, it's the dual extraction of the mushrooms. So one extraction method is not enough. Hot water or alcohol extract. We need a dual extraction to actually extract the triterpene compounds, the beta-glucan compounds, you know, the hormone side, and the antioxidant side. We want all of it. And there's so much goodness to, to behold when we're talking about these incredible medicinal mushrooms. This is what I have every day. Today I actually had the Lion's Mane coffee blend. So it's Lion's Mane Chaga Organic Coffee. Now, of course, they have the instant mushroom coffee that come in these little packets. I always travel with this. I got to be honest with you. It's been years 
And I just recently, I just recently experienced the ground coffee itself, the ground mushroom coffee using the slow drip. Oh! I have it's sexy. It's a sexy experience. I get it. I definitely get it. Now, of course, I still love my instant packs and I'm going to ride with that, but it's a vibe. All right. So head over there, check them out. It's foursigmatic.com forward slash model. That's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash model. You're going to get a very special discount, at least 10% off, maybe a little something extra. Pop over there, check them out. Coffee is one of those things. It has a resonance with our brown adipose tissue. It is what it is. Take advantage. What else do we have on the nutrition side? Well, a study cited in Frontiers in Physiology found that capsaicin, an active compound in hot peppers, was found to increase the activity of brown adipose tissue. And it was found to also trigger the browning of white adipose tissue. Spicy. All right. Take advantage of a little spiciness in your life. Add some spice to your life. These things just... Thinking of these things logically, like what would have this thermogenic effect? Well, we know that spicy foods have that effect, but also we know that part of that experience is its interaction with our brown adipose tissue. All right, so that one is pretty cool. Another one here is cholesterol. Cholesterol plays a critical role in the maintenance of your brown adipose tissue. Now, we talked about cholesterol in depth in a masterclass that we did looking at the form and function of the human brain because cholesterol is actually most concentrated in the human brain but there's a lot of nuance here now cholesterol has obviously been demonized quite a bit and there again there's nuance here in understanding a potential downside but overall it's one of the most critical nutrients for the health of the human body because cholesterol is literally the precursor to making are sex hormones, for example, but also cholesterol plays a key role in the maintenance of your brown adipose tissue. This is according to a large scale study conducted at ETH Zurich. Now, again, there are many different types of cholesterol. We got to keep that in mind as well. And it's essential to know that cholesterol in food is not the same thing as the cholesterol that's in your blood. All right. So that's a key distinction. But if we're thinking about cholesterol in food and its resonance with the human body, one of these foods that might play a role here potentially with our brown fat is eggs. So I just want you to, again, keep that in your back pocket. This might be one of those things where, you know, again, several studies have demonstrated folks eating eggs for breakfast versus a carbohydrate meal. But again, it could just be, you know, the carbohydrate and the protein, and it could be a different type of protein, but specifically utilizing eggs in this study, found that folks being on the same caloric intake, but having a different intake of eggs, or in this particular study, it was bagels to start the day, folks lost more weight, lost more body fat, lost more inches off their waist by having eggs to start the day versus the breakfast of the same amount of calories but it was a carbohydrate dominant breakfast. So could the fact that the eggs themselves have this potential player here in brown adipose tissue activity. So that's another food to keep in mind. But one of the things that, this is one of my all time favorite things that I also have on a regular basis. Actually, I actually take this before the show a lot of times. A study cited in the journal, Obesity Research and Clinical Practice details how royal jelly, a phenomenal bee product, reduces the harmful effects of diet-induced obesity and glucose intolerance by promoting brown adipose tissue thermogenesis. In mice, this was actually done in mice. All right, so really interesting research here, but couple that with another human study. This was published in Health Promotion Perspectives, demonstrating the effects of royal jelly supplementation on reducing body weight and dietary intake in type 2 diabetic females. All right, so seeing this shift take place in metabolism versus when folks are not utilizing, just adding royal jelly to the mix does something positive with the metabolism 
and is likely pointing to its impact on brown adipose tissue. Now, the reason that I actually utilize royal jelly and have been for years is based on the cognitive benefits. And this was published in Advanced Biomedical Research found that royal jelly has the potential to improve spatial learning, attention, and memory. All right. Also, royal jelly has been found to facilitate the differentiation of all types of brain cells on top of all of that. And researchers in Japan discovered that royal jelly has the power to stimulate neurogenesis, the creation of new brain cells, but they found specifically in the hippocampus, which is the memory center of the brain. Again, there are a few things ever discovered that have all of these benefits. And the royal jelly that I have is from Beekeepers Naturals. They do stuff the right way. Again, the quality matters tremendously. And it is their Be Smart product. It's amazing. Be Smart also has another one of my favorite things, but Copa is in there as well. Go to beekeepersnaturals.com forward slash model, and you're going to get a very special 25% off discount right now. All right, they just bumped it up. 25% off discount. Check out their Be Smart formula based on royal jelly. Their superfood honey is phenomenal. I can go on and on their propolis spray. Head over there, check them out beekeepersnaturals.com forward slash model. That's B-E-E-K-E-E-P-E-R-S naturals.com forward slash model. You're going to get 25% off. All right, another easily accessible food today. And again, our ancestors were utilizing a variety of sea vegetables, sea veggies forever, right? for, for thousands of years. But one of the most fascinating micronutrients found in sea veggies like Wakame, hajiki, and kelp is a compound called fucoxanthin, all right? Fucoxanthin. Research cited in the journal Food Science and Human Wellness asserts that seaweeds have anti-obesity effects and can improve metabolic rate and increase satiety. Specifically, the seaweed carotenoid fucoxanthin was found to boost the activity of uncoupling protein one. That, as we discussed, enhances the activity of our brown adipose tissue while simultaneously supporting the reduction of white adipose tissue specifically they found from the waistline all right kelp you can get a full variety of sea veggies now at even traditional grocery stores health food stores and the like you can get them in little shakers where you can just kind of shake, sprinkle on some kelp flakes or dulse flakes onto your meals, your salads, you know, maybe sprinkle on top of your fish, whatever the case might be. So pretty simple to add in. Kelp is one of my favorites and it's noted here in this particular research. And I'll share one more on the nutrition side. A study cited in the Journal of Nutrition found that the inclusion of more fat, specifically essential fatty acids, has the potential to increase the amount and activity of our brown adipose tissue. All right, remarkable, super easy. Again, targeting foods that have a palpable ratio of essential fatty acids, omega-3s, specifically DHA and EPA are the major key alert here. All right, so uh, this can look like high quality fatty fish. This can look like eggs is gonna be another source. Again, making sure that they're pastured high quality. And as we move on, we got to understand that our plant sources are not going to have DHA and EPA, but our body can convert some of the ALA found in plants into DHA and EPA, but we lose a lot in the conversion process. So I would recommend supplementation if you're doing more of a plant-based protocol, or you can even look at krill oil, right? So krill is going to be a great source of these essential fatty acids. And it might, depends on where your spectrum is with your ethics, if it's an ethical approach, with your nutrition and also from there we have fish oil has really all the data you know all, all the studies that are done in this in this capacity are really done with fish oil and we also have i would highly recommend if you're doing a plant-based protocol to get yourself an algae oil at minimum now the rub is we don't have a lot of peer-reviewed evidence we do know that the dha and epa is found there but, you know, just as an insurance policy, because it's so critical for cognitive function, but also, as we're mentioning, is critical for our metabolism. Now, one more area, we talked about cold exposure. We talked about nutrition. And we even talked about avoiding things that damage or suppress our brown adipose tissue, like pesticides. 
But one final category that I'm going to add to the mix for you today is utilizing one of the most studied things that increases our production and activity of brown adipose tissue, which is exercise, moving our bodies. Part of the reason that exercise increases your metabolic rate overall, even when you're not exercising, isn't just that exercise potentially increases your muscle development, it also increases your production and activity of your brown fat. Irisin, which is an exercise-induced myokine, is released by our muscles, and that actually helps to convert white fat into brown fat. All right, so whatever kind of movement you're into is going to help to engage this. Strength training, whether it's high-intensity interval training, low-intensity cardiovascular exercise, playing sports, going roller skating, just being active. We're going to help to engage these things. These are things that our genes expect us to do. And we get all of these additional benefits that aren't often talked about. You know, so it's not just for this superficial thing, which we all want to, to look and feel good, but for our psychology, right? So to get out and to experience joy, to do things that we love, that just so happen to be active as well, you get this added to the mix, all right? But definitely things that get your, that get your heart pumping and that get your, your body temperature going, maybe breaking a little bit of sweat, you can rest assured that brown adipose tissue is getting engaged as well. One of the, the, the most important things that the research is showing is that one of the most remarkable things in association with fat loss and weight loss is associated with having a higher diversity of, of microbes in your gut, specifically bacteria. 